Hey, welcome back to our channel. My name is Samuel. And I'm Amanda. And this is the Samuel and Amanda Show. And today, we're going to be talking about... We're going to be talking about all the different strategies that they are in property. And I'm going to be giving my take on what I think about them. Yeah, because you, <laughs> you hear me talk about all the different strategies all the time, like lease option agreements, rent to rents, buy refurbishment, finance, service to accommodation, deal sourcing. And you might hear my perspective on these different strategies, but I wanted Amanda to glean in her... Uh, perspective, what we think the best strategies are. I mean, I don't. We're not even prepared this, so we might disagree and start <laughs> arguing live on the podcast. Um, but please do us a massive favour, though. If you enjoy our channel, hit the like button, subscribe. Why should they subscribe and hit the like button? Because we give lots and lots of good content every single day on this channel, and so. you don't want to miss an yeah. update. So hit like, subscribe, turn the notification bell on. But first, how is your week going? What have you been up to? My week's going really well. So I've joined you on the Property Millionaire Intensive Tour. And um, so that's been really, really and fun. And today is the last day of the tour. But also, today is a really special day for us because... It is. It's our wedding anniversary. It is our wedding anniversary. Six so years married. Six years married today. Although technically six and a half because we did the African yeah. Zimbabwe money marriage Lobola um, six months prior. Yeah. We are in a hotel room. We do have a six-month-old baby behind us <laughs> who is awake, so we I don't know how this is going to go. If we can do this in one take, it'll be amazing. I know. I hey, know. Jessica. Isn't she awesome? <laughs> um, so, okay, cool. Anniversary. We've been on tour. Let's, hit, let's get right to it with the strategies. Uh, I want to get your take on it. So, first strategy is, and when, when we met, yep. I was doing this aggressively, and that is deal sourcing packaging deals and passing them on to investors one of the best strategies one of my favorite strategies what do you think about deal sourcing i think it's a really good strategy oh, hang on from oh. <laughs> go on what your fat you said your face <laughs> when you said you think it's a really good strategy it was like there was a butt coming. Yeah, there is a butt. There is a butt coming. I know what? you I know you love it. Samuel, you love it and you're very good at it. But I must say for what? me personally Don't, I can't hear this. I think that is quite a high pressure like thing to do. Like, you know, finding deals, okay. making sure they're really, really good. Obviously, yes, you do your due diligence to make sure that they're right for the investor. Yeah. But I think that it's a lot of weight to have. And then not only do you have that, but then also having to speak to the investors and sell to them and close them on the phone without seeing the property. I think it takes a lot of skills to do that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I've heard you speaking with people on the phone in the past. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. This what, is why lot. are you like, oh my goodness, why are you like that? Because it's sometimes the deal might fall through for whatever reason. Then you've got the refund process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you've just got sometimes investors that are just really, really difficult to please. <laughs> and well, mandate, mandate. Okay. Buying a house yep. from stop is stressful. Yes. You're taking away the stress for the investor. So yeah, of course you're taking on a bit of stress. A bit. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're taking on a bit of yeah, stress. Go on. Before that, you're not putting out any money. Yep. You're, you can start pretty much from scratch and you're, you're taking on a bit of stress for the investor. You're getting paid like three, four thousand pounds to do that. Yeah, and it's a lot of money to, to get paid for something that I just think that sometimes the investor, when they do then see the property or sometimes just people that might be a bit difficult to deal with and then yeah. you have to have these really hard conversations with them. It does take skills. It, it takes, does. It takes it does. great skill, I think, but, to be able to sell. And, it does, but... Yeah. If you can package and sell one deal a week, which is very, very part time, you're going to be making twelve grand a month, which is way more than the average salary. Yeah, no. So I, you can't expect it to be. Oh, easy. I don't want any pressure. <laughs> I want no I pressure. Want to get good money. <laughs> I don't want to have to buy the house myself. I don't have any money, but I want to get paid really well. Yeah, there is some pressure. Yeah, yeah. But all right, Mrs. No Pressure Girl. What's yeah. what's your what's your what's your what's one of your favorite strategies? One of my favourites is the BRR, buy, refurbish, refinance strategy. What? I yeah. love that. Yeah, but that's, can I just I say that? Can I just say that? that? I have to argue with you now. Go on. That's way more stressful than packaging and selling a deal. Know. I don't know. I feel like it's easier because in my experience, when you're looking after the project and then say if you've got a client, you're doing it for someone, I think it's just easy to manage their expectations. So it's easy to just be ahead of the game and then yeah. tell the investor like, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, we're a bit behind. I just feel like it's a bit, 
for me, it's easier. For me, I feel like I'm more comfortable. That's yeah. like my... You know what I think with deal selling? Sorry, I'm really hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Good I feel one. like you find a good deal, you find an investor, you sell it to them. Then you say, look, now have a look at it. And if you're happy with it, like, but then your job's kind of done. Mm. Whereas with BRR, it's like a six to 12, I love BRR, but it's like a yeah. six to 12 month process. Yeah. I mean, I do like BRR. You're a quantity surveyor. I think it's just exciting, yeah. I love like being on site, looking at the house, watching it transform. I love that sort of stuff. So for me, yeah. it doesn't feel like, you know, it's stressful or... Well, I think one of the things that is stressful about BRR... Go on. What about the cost of materials over the last 12 months? Oh, my gosh, yeah, because of COVID and stuff. I think, yeah, that is really, really bad. That's the delays, the builder saying, oh, we haven't got this in, so then your, your project's been delayed. That's been quite Costs a bad... Costs have gone up. Yeah. How much have they gone up by? I think, like, 30% yeah. a lot of materials. Yeah. Um, like, even Jessica's going crazy about it. She's outraged. <laughs> She's outraged. I mean, I think if you're doing a BRR deal, my advice would be to make sure that the figures really stack. Mm. Sometimes people, because they love doing it, you know, <laughs> they might want to go for a property that doesn't quite stack up just because they like the house. I think, oh, I can just imagine visualising myself doing that. But it's like, no, that stuff's fun, but make sure the formulas stack, make sure the figures mm. stack. Because if you're off just by 10% on the refurb yeah, and then just 10% yeah. on the end value, woo! Nearly all of your profit's gone. Mm. So make sure there's enough cushion in the profit. Uh, what's your favorite part of buy refurbishment finance? You've obviously got the buying process, you've got the refurbishing, you've got the refinancing, and then putting the tenants in at the end. Uh, what's your favorite part? I just love the end when you can then dress the house and make it look pretty. And yeah. then obviously showing the value around, showing them like, this is my baby, this is what I've done. I yeah. think that's really fun. Okay, lease option agreements. Lease option agreements are really, really good. We use them I all think, the time, don't yeah. we, on our, on our development deals. I, I use them to get started. Mm. Um, so describe, in your words, because they've heard it from me before, what is a <laughs> lease option agreement? Lease option agreement is basically like buy now, pay later. So you get the property, you take hold, you take control of it, you pay the mortgage payments, you get the tenants in. The person that owns it is basically just, you're the new owner effectively, not on paper. And then you then agree to buy it in say five to 10 years time. The value of the property has probably gone up. So you're getting it for a bargain price. And you're benefited from the rent every month. Yeah. You can do it on land where you can get an option to buy a piece of land, but then you can add value by getting planning permission. Uh, but then if you can't get planning permission, you walk away. So options, we, we both love options. Yeah, At least they're really, really We can cool. agree that we both love yeah, options. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. what about service accommodation service accommodation is great especially right now i yes. feel like with the staycations they were cool before but i think now it's even more like a prime time to get into it and do yeah. it and you love that like that finishing touch job don't you yeah Where you can just be like, oh this looks amazing yeah yeah i think with service accommodation i love service accommodation and i, I think right now it's absolutely popping and mm. the thing is it's so tax efficient as well like the capital allowances if you're buying a property to do service accommodation you can get reduced stamp duty you've got the um if you systemize it right you've got the really high cash flow that you're going to get from mm. it but when you refurb a property and then do it as service accommodation i think that's probably the best feeling because yeah. it's like a really mucky property push the value up, refurb the house, then kit it out really nice. It's just like you've turned yeah. a derelict, run-down property. You've paid no stamp duty on the property because it's not even habitable. And then now it's this beautiful hotel effect. That everyone wants to stay in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So service, and service accommodation is one of the most popular strategies with our students as well. And, oh man, so many of our students um, pop in with service accommodation. Um, joint ventures. Joint ventures, great as well. Really, really good for someone that, you know, when you can find someone, if you've got lots, lots of time, and then you find someone that's got lots of money, but not the time, and then, you know, it's like a perfect match, yeah. and then you can joint venture. So I think that's really cool. If you haven't got any money, you've got the knowledge, then you can collaborate with someone who, you know, can give you the money, so. One of the things that we're gonna be teaching today um, at this program in Warsaw, we're in Warsaw, by the way, we're, this hotel was where I did my very, very first crash course, so it's really cool being back here. <laughs> but one of the things we're gonna be teaching today is HMOs. And the great thing about places like Warsaw, where we are right now, is Warsaw has not got any Article 4, which means that you have permitted development rights. So you can buy a house and you can just turn it into a HMO without getting planning. But then when they bring in Article 4, which they will soon, then that property will have automatic grandfather rights, which means the value will go up. We saw this happen in Wolverhampton. We saw it happen in Birmingham. Now we're in Warsaw. So I love HMOs. You've had the brunt of managing a oh lot of gosh. HMOs. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm like, no thanks, no thanks. I think it's really cool when you're starting out. I think it's really good skill to learn how to deal with tenants, that sort of thing. But oh my goodness, it's a lot of work. But we we uh, we've got a lot of HMOs now, but we just yeah. we, we've just either got really good managing yeah. companies in place, or we've passed it on to corporate lets or social housing. Yeah. Still HMOs, but it's just that. You used to literally. How many rooms did you manage at one time for oh, our room and about 120? I, yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. 120. 120 it rooms. Was, oh my goodness. Yeah, it was a lot, but it's. I think they're really, really good for cash flow. HMOs. Yeah. So if you're managing, great. if you're managing more than four or five HMOs, it will become a bit of a job. Mm. It will become a bit of a job. So again, make sure when you take on HMOs that you just systemize them. You get good HMO management companies. Yeah. Top tip for top tip for getting good HMO management companies in place. I'd probably say just go on spare room and then look at the ads. There's lots and lots of uh, managers on there. And usually mm. you can see when they've rented out, it will say they'll have a strike through all the rooms. You see the ones that I like that, you know that they're very good at renting out their rooms. So get well, in touch with them and speak with them. Although something interesting is a lot of our properties, to be fair, we'd rent the rooms out, but we wouldn't say it's rented out because you want an ever flowing call of potential tenants. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's great. Also referrals, ask around. Going to, if you're going into a new area to do HMOs, find someone else that's doing HMOs, ask them if you can pick their brain, share resources, yeah. uh, get trained, I always say this, but when you step out into new strategies, make sure you've got the education. So which brings us to, we're gonna obviously crack on, I'm gonna go downstairs, I've got 250 people waiting for me downstairs, <laughs> i got a wonderful wife who's it's my anniversary of, so this is gonna be a little bit of a shorter one than normal. So Amanda, final words of wisdom. Okay, so they are, feel the fear and do it anyway. So all of these strategies, they can seem a bit daunting and bit really scary, but I think when you're equipped with the right training and you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, you might feel a bit scared to step out and do it, but just feel, feel the fear and just go for it anyway. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Taking action is ultimately the key to success. So good luck guys, go smash it. If you need any help, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram, subscribe, and we will see you next time. See ya.